Hey, this is Brock Lemires. We're continuing our study of embedded systems design. We have switched over to the C language, and in this video, we're going to look at the implementation of for loops. More specifically, what happens when you type a for loop in and how is it translated into instructions? Okay, so let's fire up CCS and let's go right for it. So let's go file new and then let's get a new CCS project. And let's go ahead and we'll give this, we'll say this is C underscore for loops. And make sure you got your empty only main.c. Go ahead and fire that up. Here comes my skeleton uh, main.c. And I'm going to nuke that block header. And I'm ready to go. Okay, so here's what we have. Um, a for loop. Here's the syntax for a for loop. Remember, it is for and then you're going to have arguments. Okay, and what for loop do is they have a loop variable that they will automatically increment or decrement or alter each time through the loop and you use a start and a stop value for the loop variable so that you can make a loop that executes a certain number of times. So for example if I came along and said i is equal to zero I'm going to use i as my loop variable and the first argument is what the starting value is then you give it the condition for staying in the loop so let's do something like i is less than 10 and then you give it the condition for how you want to alter the loop variable so let's increment it by one and so a loop like this the for loop like this will essentially it's going to come in it's going to start at i is equal to zero and then each time through it'll go zero one two three four five and once it gets up to nine it'll keep going and then once it's equal to ten this condition right here is not true and it'll exit the loop Okay, so that's that's a reminder of how these for loop works. In C, though, when you create the for loop uh, by just putting i is equal to zero, that doesn't create the loop variable. You have to create the loop variable outside. Okay, so I have to come up here and I have to create the loop variable or declare it, and I'm going to initialize it to to zero to start, even though I don't really need to because it'll happen here. But within the for loop, what do you, we? Sh let's just do something simple like uh, <clears throat> let's assign the loop variable to a, another variable called count. And so we'll have to set up count and let's initialize that. And now you think about this, what's gonna happen? Basically we've created this, this counter, right? And it's gonna count from zero to nine and then it'll jump out, all right? The problem is that when we jump out of the for loop, it's gonna hit this return statement and the computer's gonna crash. And we don't want that, okay? We're an MCU, we're not returning to an operating system. We want this thing to run forever. So let's go ahead and use our while one loop uh, as a way to keep this thing going forever. Okay, so I'm going to say while one, and then we'll come down here and let's let's push this over a little bit so it looks kind of nice, and then we'll go ahead and close up the while loop, and there we go. Okay, so I have a forever loop. This is going to be like a main jump main, and then in here we're going to have this conditional looping structure which looks at the value of i. Okay, so we're ready to compile, but what we want to do is go ahead and turn off optimization. Otherwise, the compiler will recognize we're not accessing the outside world and it'll remove our program for us. And while that's nice, we <laughs> want to see it because we're trying to learn, we're trying to basically form an understanding of how these looping structures in C get translated into opcodes and operands. Okay, so here's our program. And I'm going to look at the disassembly right here. If you don't have disassembly up, go ahead and go over to view and go down to disassembly. Uh, and I'm ready to roll here. Uh, let's see. Let's put a breakpoint at our first instruction. And let's go ahead and run to it. And so now I'm down to here. And right away, I noticed that I have two variables in my variable viewer. <clears throat> and that's great. Um, if you don't see your variable tab right there, again, it's over under view variables. And this is kind of cool because I've got count and i they're both of type int and look at where they put them they put them in the stack again so they're in the stack that's cool all right so here's the first instruction i'm going to go ahead and step and it's going to do this move instruction that's going to implement this watchdog timer thing so we go ahead and do that and now here's our int i equals zero interestingly when i do int i if i just did that it sets up the variable for us. So the compiler decided to reserve some space in the stack. But since I initialized it on the same line, that resulted in an instruction. So that's where you got the clear W. And now look at what's interesting is that it is, it is clearing using indexed addressing. And it's using the stack pointer <clears throat> as where to look at this variable. So if I come into registers and I go down to look at the stack pointer, 
Stack pointer is at two FF eight. Okay, so if you think about that, it's pointing to the location of I. So when I go ahead and I run this, I is gonna clear, and that was interesting. Then look, look at what happens here. It goes to clear count. It doesn't increment the stack pointer. It simply applies an offset using indexed addressing in order to access this location in the stack. So I go ahead and I go run. Actually, let's let's get look at the memory browser uh, and actually prove to ourselves that this is happening. So here's the bottom of stack, right? Here's actually let's go 0x3. No, this is right. We want to we want to do this. So 0x2 FFA. And so here's this little buddy, 2 FFA. And so if I step this, it cleared it out. Okay. So that's awesome. <laughs> All right. So life is good. Uh, so now we come back here and we're ready to roll. And notice that between these values, it's 9, a Yeah. Okay. So anyway, <clears throat> here we are. Now we're ready to do some stuff. Okay. So we're now we're going to enter into the for loop and take a look at what the first thing it does is. It does a compare against immediate address addressing mode A. It's comparing what I is to A. And it's like, what, what is that? Well, oh, look at this. A for loop checks whether the loop variable has reached its, its condition. And then it decides whether to stay in the loop. So it is actually comparing I to the value decimal 10. So the way that this is put into memory is this is A is hex 10, and it compares the value of I, and it provides the, the value of I using an addressing mode here, index addressing. So it goes and looks at this and says, hey, whatever's in this location of memory, compare it to 10. And then if it's greater than or equal to zero, go ahead and loop, okay? So it's gonna have go ahead and loop back to there. And so you think about what that does. Let's watch, let's watch it execute and watch the logic. So I do ahead the compare, I jump it greater than or equal, <clears throat> and it did not jump. So this basic the jump right here is basically going to exit the loop. So this is what the code is for being in the loop. And it's like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Again, it's using these weird uh, automatically generated address labels, <clears throat> but that's fine. And now we're down into here. So I'm going to move I into count. And I notice that I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to move this. Okay. So I go ahead and do this. So it increments it. Compare, jump of less than. Go ahead and moves it. And it's going to do this. And so it, the functionality for this is interesting because it didn't, it didn't go directly into assembly code like we would imagine, right? It's kind of got this jump of greater than or equal, and it's got this jumper than less than. And it's like interesting. But it doesn't matter because it works. So let's watch this go all the way up. And we, we see that I and count are being updated. So if I'm clicking through here, and what I want to get to is I want to see the condition where it checks it and it's, it's not less than 10 and it exits the for loop. So here we go. So now this is going to be where we get to. So now we're ready and it's going to compare it, compare it, and it doesn't. So then it jumps out. So it jumped out of the for loop, but check this out. It is now going to look process the while loop. Well, the while loop is simply just a jump always. And so it's going to jump always back up to here, and then it's going to go ahead and start. So we go ahead and say, okay, let's go ahead and do it again. And it increment, it sets it back to zero <laughs> and it's doing it. Okay. But what's cool about this is that we, it, it implemented a lot of instructions that we recognize and it implemented some logic that maybe didn't make a lot of sense if we were doing this in assembly, but that's fine. The compiler probably does it better than us. And so that is a for loop and that's the implementation of it. Okay, so that was it. Nice work. Uh, remember, support my channel by subscribing and see ya.